If you guys have ever wondered how to take a piece of bare metal like this and powder coat it and turn it into something awesome like this, then you may want to hang out for this video. So I always wanted to learn about powder coating. I always thought it was a neat process. I always thought it was really expensive and really intricate, especially for a guy that doesn't really like to paint. And come to find out, it's actually really easy and really affordable to get into. And so I reached out to Eastwood. They sent me the tools to do it. And after doing it, I can tell you that I'll make sure by the end of this video that you guys know how to do it, that you will be able to do it, that you can do it in your garage. And if you guys stay till the end, I got a surprise for you and I know it'll be worth it. So stay tuned. So I picked up the new PCS 250 dual voltage powder coat gun, a book on powder coating for dummies, which was actually really helpful. Uh, obviously some powder coat, and yes, I went with green, a powder coating accessory kit, uh, which included two inline air filters that you install on the end of your gun, a safety lock wire to hang your parts, three extra bottles for your powder, plus a bottle of black powder coat, fiberglass high temp tape, and a high temp silicone plugs for any holes that you don't want to get powder coated. Outside of that, I also picked up an air dryer for my compressor because humidity is the devil for powder coat guns. Also some cleaner so that I can make sure that whatever surface I'm powder coating is nice and crispy clean. And lastly, I have my trail ready beadlock rings that I'm gonna powder coat today along with my cheapo oven that can fit a full size 17 inch wheel if I wanted it to. I got my oven from uh, Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> is all of $50. I did have to buy a $10 plug though to be able to change it from a four prong to a three prong uh, 50 amp because that's all I got in my garage. But check this out. So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure my oven light works, which it does. That's a win. So I turned the oven temperature up to 450 and while it was warming up, I decided to get all my powder coat stuff ready. I've never done this before. This is what I'm gonna try it with, is a wrench, and then we'll go from there. As long as I can make that work, then I know that we can do those beadlock rings. Oops. I'm gonna get a funnel, because obviously I can't pour this stuff very well. So there was a couple quick things I definitely learned with my practice run. <laughs> you uh, want to make sure that your air pressure regulator is turned down as low as possible, like 10 PSI-ish while you're spraying. Secondly, the ground needs to have good contact with whatever you're spraying for it to actually hold or adhere to what you're spraying. And thirdly, do not hold down the power switch and touch the wrench. FYI. If you're holding that switch and you grab anything on there, it shocks you. It kind of feels like it's a it's volts, but it's no amps. So it kind of feels like when you're holding a spark plug, you know, a, a bad spark plug wire or spark plug, and you're checking it on a block, and somebody starts it, and it shocks the snot out of you. That's about what it felt like. Kind of got me. <laughs> so one of the things to recognize when you're spraying with a powder coat gun is this piece is your spray adjuster. The farther you push this piece of plastic in, the farther out the spray is going to get. If you're trying to get intricate stuff, you actually pull it off so that you can get down to the very tight little spots. I picked these up because the ones that I have on my trail ready bead locks have chewed up pretty good and I didn't want to powder coat those green because I'd have to sand so much down on them. Plus they have a little bit of anodizing on them where these are bare aluminum. So all I gotta do is clean them up and then we can spray them. So Eastwood also sells this pre-painting prep. This is basically, it removes silicone wax, polished grease, dirt, or anything else you can, uh, you're gonna need to remove before you paint or do any powder coat. So I'm gonna put these on these bead locks, even though they're uh, new and bare aluminum, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on and make sure it's all cleaned up. Here's where I decided to hook up the ground because I'm not going to powder coat the back side of this anyway because nobody's ever going to see this part. 
So with it hooked to the here and down to here, we're pretty good. See if I can pull this off without getting the powder off of it. So I'll pick it up like that. All right, this thing will fit a 17 inch wheel and it fit an actual wheel, not just the, not just the uh, beadlock if you needed it. Oven set at 450. We just threw the ring in the oven uh, in about five, five, six minutes here. The powder's already flown out, as you can see. It's nice and shiny now, and not powdery. So now I went ahead and set the temp back down to 400 degrees, and I'm gonna let it run for 20 minutes at 400 degrees, and that's gonna cure it. Once it's cured, what I'm gonna do is actually hang it back up and hit it with a second coat to make that coat extra thick. And you can powder coat over powder coat over powder coat. Uh, in fact, if I wanted like a brighter green, what I would have done is used a white powder coat as a base and then came back over it with this sour apple green. So you can uh, do any colors too. You can actually even mix it if you'd like. If you'd like to mix powder coat, you can actually take two colors, mix them together to make whatever color you want. You know, give it a test spray, bake it, and then see if it comes out. And I've actually seen people that are really good at this match their vehicles with a powder coat color. One thing I should mention is that depending on what you are, what you are powder coating, uh, no matter if it's if it's uh, something like aluminum or if it's something real thick like a piece of cast or something the cast is going to take longer to cure because the metal in it is the metal in the cast is going to take longer to heat up if that makes sense so easy peasy hopefully this turns out good this is my first shot with a beadlock ring and powder coat i made a mess look at that mess but uh, hopefully it'll be worth it. So the great thing about powder coat is if you don't like what you sprayed or got clumpy or something, you just wipe it off and spray it again. Unlike paint where you get runs and you have to redo everything. Also, uh, unlike paint where you have a floor mess from the overspray, I still had lots of overspray here, but check it out. You can just sweep it up. Honestly, if I knew how to uh, bag this up and reuse it, I probably would. So I just threw on the second coat. If you wanna see, you can see it actually kinda of goes on already glossed, but you can see how much uh, thicker the color looks and how much deeper it looks. So that's kinda of look I was going for, is more of a deep, a deep look. Go down, garage. Thank you. Time's up. Alrighty. Let's uh let me get some glovey gloves for this. It's gonna be too hot for these gloves, so let me get my oven mitts. Oh yeah, look at that. Regular. Awesome. Pretty excited. And you can do that. Basically, you measure your oven. If it fits in it, you can powder coat it. So I'm going to take this glass, I'm going to do what's called hot flocking. I'm going to put it in the oven at temperature. So I'm going to turn the temperature up to 400, 425 ish, whatever. And I'm going to put this glass in there. So one fun fact about powder coating is that anything that you can conduct electricity through you can technically powder coat as long as it can handle the heat of the oven. You want to make a bajillion dollars on Etsy? Buy yourself an Eastwood powder coat kit and paint a bunch of different colored mason jars. Getting rich! <laughs> Sometimes I'm dumb and I forget that this oven has its own timer. <laughs> so everything I use today in the Eastwood products, everything from the cleaner 
to the spray gun to the powder coat and everything else even my air dehydrator you can get at Eastwood and if you use the link below or you go to the bleepin Jeep webpage you can see where we have a discount code where you get 10% off anything you buy so just remember these steps turn the oven on to 450 degrees step two put your powder in the gun step three turn your air pressure down as low as possible preferably 10 psi step four prep and clean the metal surface you're getting ready to spray step five make sure you have a good ground step six plug in your Eastwood hot coat machine step seven make sure you have PPE step eight have your power switch in hand and your gun in the other hand step nine apply your powder coat step 10 once your ovens reached 450 degrees set your powder coated ring inside your oven so I hope this showed you guys that you can get a really affordable powder coat setup and you can powder coat stuff that this to do all four of these beadlock rings I'm basically paying what it would have cost me just to have it powder coated and now I have the entire unit for the rest of my life and all you had to do is make a phone call to Eastwood for it and now that you guys have gotten to the end of this video this is the surprise I was going to tell you about anybody that gives this video a thumbs up and leaves a comment down below you have a chance to win one of these we will make sure that Eastwood knows that one of you is going to win one of these and they're going to send it right to your house so make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you leave a comment if you want to know any more details about the giveaway just look down below it'll be in the comment section so see you guys have fun hope you learned something i know i did thanks who wants to buy a mason jar on etsy for 40 bucks oh yeah